Hi everyone, this is Sugandha. I'm a graduate student in the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences at MIT. And recently I've been receiving lots of uh, emails from people, especially in India, but also in other, other parts of the US, asking me what they should do if they're interested in the field of uh, neuroscience or cognitive science. And since this is my area of research, I just thought I would do a quick video just so that uh, I can route people to this video um, if they have questions about the field. Um, so let me share my screen and I have created the set of links which might be useful for people and which I'll all, also post um, under the video today after uh, recording. But so what I wanna first point out is that if you feel yourself getting interested in neuroscience or cognitive science, the first thing for you to do is take a look at potential areas uh, uh, within neuroscience and cognitive science itself that, that might suit your interests. So for instance, here, um, I'm just you know taking you to the graduate program at MIT. But you'll see that here, um, here at MIT, basically, you know, the neuroscience department and psychology department were merged um, to form the brain and cognitive sciences department. And the rationale behind this was that, you know, people who are working um, to understand the brain uh, from different um, uh, perspectives and using different approaches should be working together with each other, right? So understanding the brain is a very challenging problem. And, um, you know, both from, uh, and it's, it's an interesting problem, both from a scientific point of view and also from an application perspective, because a lot of uh, people who are interested in artificial intelligence are now looking at uh, understanding the brain to kind of get inspiration for potential computations that they can use to build their artificial systems. And so, um, you know, if you feel yourself, uh, if you find yourself getting interested in in this field, the first thing to note is that, you know, this field itself has these different research areas uh, of interest. And here in BCS, we just have the program split up into cognitive science, systems neuroscience, cellular and molecular neuroscience, and computation, right? So I think the first step for you is, you know, to look at these areas um, and there's some description of each of these areas. So um, I can also just give you a brief description. So in cognitive science, basically, you know, it's the study of the human mind and it, it com combines ideas from various fields like psychology, computer science, philosophy, linguistics, uh, neuroscience and so on. And it usually takes a top-down approach uh, to understanding the brain, uh, which is mostly informed by behavior, right? So you look at the behavior uh, and you study human behavior um, and that you use that to inform whatever computational models you are building. Systems neuroscience, um, on the other hand, is uh, usually related to understanding different systems in the brain. For instance, you know, the basal ganglia or the hippocampus, um, these might be different systems. And so usually this involves uh, animal experiments. So uh, sometimes you put electrodes in, in the brains of um, animals and sometimes you, you use approaches like neuroimaging, and there are various experimental approaches like optogenetics. And so you can uh, look into them yourself. I won't go into the details, but it really, this is really related, related to studying systems uh, within the brain. And usually, it, you know, people who are doing this kind of um, uh, research usually work with animals to record data. And then they look at the, that data, analyze the data and build models uh, to, you know, make predictions and uh, test those predictions again by doing so experiments on animals. Um, cellular and molecular neuroscience uh, takes us even at the uh, at even a lower level uh, than what have we've been talking about. So this is the level where um, you know you're looking now at the cellular level and the molecular level and the mechanisms at these um, low levels. So one instance uh, would be for instance you know when the when two neurons in the brain are uh, fired together, they wire together, and this is called synaptic plasticity. And uh, you know, in in computational models, we model them in a very simple way. But when you are looking at the mechanism, uh, you actually look at what's happening at those uh, synapses, right? What neurotransmitters are getting released? How are they getting bound to the receptors? What is the mechanistic process uh, through which 
uh, learning in the brain happens. So th that's uh, an example of something that will fall under the cellular and molecular neuroscience. And then, you know, computation is kind of a broad area where, um, you know, this involves data analysis, uh, looking at data and using computational tools to kind of understand that data. Usually when you record data from neurons in the brain, it's very high dimensional data and it's difficult to say what it means and what, uh, you know, it implies. And so in order to make it understandable, you usually do dimensionality reduction and try to uh, reduce uh, uh, the this higher dimensional data into a few principal components which are easier to understand and interpret. Um, and so that's one part of computation. Another part of computation is also building models um, and you know understanding what's going on in the brain from a theoretical perspective. So this involves you know doing theoretical work to explain uh, how the brain works and also uh, using the theoretical work uh, to build models. Um, uh, which can be mathematical models um, at various levels of abstraction from algorithmic to um, implementation level. And so, um, you know, the, these are uh, these are basically this is the area that will require you to have a very strong computational uh, skills, you know, and computational backgrounds uh, like engineering, mathematics, physics, and so on. Um, and so, yeah, the first step, if you get interested in cognitive science and neurosciences to look at these areas, look at what are your current skills, um, and then see which area matches your interests and your skills and background, right? So having explored that, um, you know, what you can do is um, also look at this list of readings. With This is very useful list of readings. It's very interesting. It has a nice compilation of uh, books in different areas. And so you'll see there are books under cognitive neuroscience, um, which uh, itself contains different um, uh, areas uh, in itself, right? So here uh, there are books on innateness, vision, memory, planning, and so on. And, and these are all very interesting books. So you can pick one or two books from each of the, from any, any of the areas that you are interested in, and then take a look uh, in order to gauge uh, whether, you know, you're really interested and whether, you know, the material presented in the book is of uh, interest to you. And then you can see here, uh, there are other books on circuits and mechanistic neuroscience. And then there are, you know, also recent advancements at the intersection of neuroscience, cognitive science, and artificial intelligence. These are some very interesting books. So for instance, um, and also papers. So for instance, this is uh, work done by Dan Humans, uh, who was a postdoc with uh, Jim DiCarlo in, uh, in the department I'm in. And so, here, um, you know, they did very seminal work where they recorded. So this was kind of bringing systems neuroscience and computational neuroscience together uh, by, you know, they, what they did was they made recordings from the visual cortex in the monkey, and then they built models. Uh, and these models were inspired by the deep networks, um, which are very commonly used now in artificial intelligence systems. And so these models uh, kind of became hypotheses for the human visual cortex. And they showed that, you know, if you build certain architectures in a certain kind of deep net architecture, then it very closely resembles um, activations in the visual cortex. And so uh, oh, there's also uh, lots of other papers, uh, for instance, context dependent computations by recurrent dynamics and prefrontal cortex is also another seminal work. Uh, and so, I suggest, you know, looking at these papers, this is a very interesting uh, set of readings. And um, if you are in India, uh, I know that the field of neuroscience and cognitive science, um, you know, in the past hadn't been very well developed in India, but now it's very interesting time for these fields in India, because there are these new institutes, um, which are very interesting, very, very good institutes which have come up. So I can just show you, this is a center for um, neuroscience. And uh, you can look at, so this is basically a uh, set of neuroscience at, at Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. And this is one of the nice areas where you can go um, for your graduate school or even for, um, you know, gaining experience before applying to graduate school. So you can go and work as a research assistant. So you can see they have, um, you know, these, a PhD program. You can look at the details of the PhD program itself. But more importantly, you can look at research areas, right? And having established your own interest, you can look at what different research areas um, they offer. And you can basically, they have 
a diverse set of research areas that they are looking at. And um, this is one of the nice uh, places to go get some exposure um, to neuroscience and cognitive science. Then we see that there's also a center for cognitive uh, and brain sciences uh, at um, IIT Gandhinagar. And this is also another good place to be. Uh, they also have a graduate program, um, you know, where you can go and uh, do your PhD. Um, and this is a very interdisciplinary uh, a place to be in. And then you can, uh, you know, again, if you're not ready for graduate school, you can also, um, you know, uh, just go and work there as research assistant. Uh, and there are, uh, they've listed these ongoing projects and you can see whether any of those piques your interest and, you know, contact the principal investigators to see if they are willing to, you know, have you work as research assistants. And, you know, when you work as a research assistant, you are basically acquiring skills and research experience, which would be in the long run, very beneficial for you, especially if you plan to apply for graduate school. Uh, and this would also, you know, give you uh, give you a person who can write a recommendation letter for you, um, you know, saying that you worked with them and commenting on your research capabilities. So the last one is the Department of Cognitive Sciences at IIT Kanpur, and they also have a, a very nice graduate program. So you can see that they offer a PhD program in cognitive science um, where people are expected to graduate uh, for five years. And again, this is another uh, place where you can go to if you are looking for you know, research experience even before applying to graduate school. And so um, those are the three main uh, places um, where you should should be, you know, which you should be considering if you are in India and you are interested uh, in the field of neuroscience or cognitive science. So that will be a starting point, and I'll leave it at that uh, today. And if you have any questions about, um, you know, what I've covered today, uh, then feel free to comment, and I will uh, get back to you as soon as I can.